Today on BRS TV, we're going to go over when to change your RO filters. There's some general rules of thumb out there, but in this video, we're going to get a little bit more in depth so that you can get the maximum amount of use out of your filters before changing them. The general rule on the pre filters, which includes the sediment filter and carbon blocks, is to change them every 6 to 12 months depending on how much water you produce. However, this is just an average, and to get the exact time to change them, we need to look at the filters individually. The first filter in the system is a sediment filter, which is designed to remove sediment and dirt from the water supply so your carbon blocks don't get clogged prematurely. Now everyone has a different amount of sediment in their water, so there's no one-size-fits-all answer to tell you how long it should last for you. However, for most people, they'll find that it lasts a few to several months. But there are some cases where it may only last one to two months if you have a heavy amount of sediment in your water supply. The best way to know when to change your sediment filter is to install a pressure gauge between the last carbon block and your membrane. When the pressure begins to drop, it's an indication that your sediment filter is actually getting clogged and you should change it. It's important to keep the pressure as high as possible going into the membrane and the sediment filters only cost a few dollars so it's a good idea to change them on time. If you find that you're changing them frequently, you may want to try one of our premium filters like the rosave.z. If you maintain your sediment filters properly, your carbon block should last you a long time. Most reef RO systems use two carbon blocks, with the first one being a 5 micron carbon block, like our Matrix CTO, which is rated for 6,000 gallons. Keep in mind that this is waste and product water, so if you had a 100 gallon tank that evaporated 2 gallons a day, and you did a 20 gallon water change twice a month, that would be 100 gallons of product water per month. Most RO systems operate at 3 to 1 to 5 to 1 waste to product water ratio depending on the water pressure and temperature. So if yours was in the middle and operating at 4 to 1, that would be a total of 500 gallons of water you would use a month. So it would take you 12 months to pass 6,000 gallons of water through the filter and should change it once a year. The next carbon block is typically a 1 micron carbon block like our CTO+. Plus. These are actually rated for 20,000 gallons of water. However, because the pores are so small, they often get clogged before that, and we recommend changing it out with the 5 micron carbon block at the same time. The next filter in line is the RO membrane, and it's actually the filter that's doing all of the work. The carbon blocks and sediment filters are only prepping the water for the membrane so it doesn't get damaged. Typically, you'll get about three years out of an RO membrane. However, I've seen them go as long as five. You may get shorter if you have really hard water, or you never flush the membrane. A good membrane like our Dow 75 gallon per day will reject about 98% of the TDS coming into the membrane, which means if your home's water supply is 100 TDS, it will reject 98% of that and should come out of the membrane at two. If you have low water pressures or really cold water, you may get as low as 96% rejection, which means you would come out around four. To test your membrane, you're gonna need a TDS meter like this one. I prefer the inline style over the pen style because it doesn't have issues with contamination of the sample. To get an accurate reading, you're gonna to wanna to turn your RO system on for 10 minutes before you test. You'll know that your RO membrane is starting to go bad when the TDS begins to climb. This can often happen pretty suddenly, and because of that, I like to change mine every three years and try to preempt it. The last filter on the system is the deionization resin cartridge. This is going to put the final polish on the water and remove the last few TDS. How long this lasts you is going to vary drastically. For some people, it could be as short as a few weeks, and for others, it could last the entire year. Again, you should allow your system to run for a few minutes before you test, but when it begins to read anything other than zero, you should go ahead and change out the resin. How long the resin lasts you is a function of how much water you produce and what the TDS is coming out of your membrane. So if your RO system is producing two TDS and you're only using 10 gallons of water a week, it's probably gonna last you a really long time. However, if you're using 20 or 30 gallons a week, and the TDS coming out of your membrane is 10 or 15 because your city's water supply is really dirty, 
well, you're going to go through the resin much faster. One last note, since most reefers use a refillable cartridge like this one, we want to express how important it is to pack the resin in there as tight as possible. So we're going to go ahead and show you. So the first thing you want to do is tear the top off of your bag and remove the foam ring from your DI cartridge. Go ahead and fill it about a third of the way up. Now you need to settle out all of the beads. So you're going to tap it on the table pretty hard and make sure that they all settle out. Once you're sure that it's settled out as much as possible and that you've packed it as tight as you can, you're going to go ahead and repeat this step two more times until you have it full to the top. So once you have it full and level to the top, I want you to take your finger and run it around the edge and just remove a small ring of resin all the way around. And go ahead and put it in your bag. This is going to help keep some of the resin out of the threads when you put it together. Put your foam ring in. and screw the top on. You're going to want to make sure it's on all the way. When you're done, a properly packed cartridge will be very hard to squeeze. And what we've done here is packed it tight enough that it'll be very hard for the negatively and positively charged beads to separate out and prematurely deplete your resin. If you are interested in being notified when we make new additions to BRS TV, you can sign up for our newsletter found on almost every product page. You can also log into your account and hit the Newsletter Subscriptions tab.